Lindsay Girls. Right, well, enough of those boys. <laughs> they were actually they said, nice. they yeah, oh they were, gosh they were well behaved for a change for a change let me just doing? test my mic how loud because i jasmine was saying i don't even need a mic because i'm so loud so <laughs> i hope i'm not offending so anyone's gobby. eardrum so gobby <laughs> yes gosh right how are you doing really good thanks how are you i'm all right thank you this is big festival Yay! it's Yay! awesome have you been here before? No. no. No, I've not been before this year. It's amazing, isn't it? I'm scanning. And I never use this neighbors. cooker. Where's my I neighbors? can help you with that. Can oh, I? There we go. Yeah. There we go. Uh, right, now we better actually Thanks crack for on cooking. Us. We'll talk while we're going because we're doing about 47 courses or something, aren't we? We are doing 47 courses, which we right. wish we could feed you, but we can't. So we're going to feed you because he said he doesn't get to eat all day. I will take this for the team. On behalf of all of you, I will sacrifice myself to eat this amazing food. <laughs> what um, can I get for you? Right, right well, first of all, what, I need what, a spiralizer. What, what are we cooking? I need a spiralizer, and I need to, people to start thinking about whether they want to come and volunteer to spiralize. Ah, uh, yeah, we there's might one. Need a sous chef. One sous chef. And there's a ma man in purple and lady over there. Come on up. When, wait, we need the spiralizer I think, first. I think my mic's. Is my mic on? You didn't bring a spiralizer, you too? We did. Do you know what? <laughs> we They're sold out, you can't get them anymore. On? We promised to give it to Gennaro. Ah. So you maybe Gennaro's got it already. Come uh, on up, okay, come cool. on up. Thank Sorry, you. we did practice What's your name? this backstage, just so Emma, you know. Emma, welcome to the Thank you. Here, I'll take this kitchen. Hi, Emma. Sir, what's your name? Hello. Marcus. Where's welcome. our spiralizer? Emma and Marcus, everyone. Hi, Hi right, Emma and Marcus. I find the spiralizer? This is Jasmine, this is Emma and Marcus. Marcus. And we're going to cook up lots of different things today. So we're going to make uh, a spaghetti ragu. Sorry, I'm covering you, aren't I? We're going to make a spaghetti ragu. Uh, growing up, our favorite food was um, spaghetti bolognese. And uh, we had the traditional pasta and spaghetti. Who doesn't love it? But as we got a bit older, we realized that, you know, you can't... It is a really easy food, isn't it, spaghetti? Yeah. But we wanted to eat more vegetables. And actually, cooking spaghetti is really easy. But spiralizing courgettes, when you've got a spiralizer, <laughs> is even quicker. And what we love to do, you know, People think healthy eating means you have to cook every single day, but actually, Seamless. I, I, there we go, yay. yay. Do you want to go first? Oh, We've got Just no blades. Have you spiralized before? <laughs> that's, you Jazz, are. Use that one. Jazz has a blade in it. No, it's the wrong blade, wrong blade. Gosh, I think about 10 minutes is fast already. <laughs> right, it is happening. So. Well, this is a good point to say. If you don't have a spiralizer, you can use uh, a normal <laughs> peeler. So, you know when you're peeling a carrot, just apply, say, three times the amount of pressure, and then you can make lovely thick strips, which if you want to, you can then trim, or you can just have them pappardelle style. And we're going to do courgettes now, because these are lovely, your lovely homegrown produce they from are. around here. Yep. Gorgeous courgettes, because it's courgette time. Here, we'll put it there, because the book's in the way. Okay. Not that we're promoting the book or anything. Um, <laughs> but then uh, you can do courgettes. Here, Emma, you up for it? Right, Emma has spiralized Emma before. Emma has spiralized Once. before. So have a go here. All we need to do is try and pick. I'm all for ugly vegetables, but I tend to pick my, keep my ugly, bendy courgettes for other things, and I keep my straight ones for spiralizing. So off you go. Here we go. There we are. And so there's the first one. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Uh, Very strong handed there. Do not chop fingers off. Here you go. So you everyone thinks my that, fault. They're a bit um, wet. The there health food is again. really uh, takes a long time and it's quite That's boring it. to do. What we wanted to do was prove that, you know, eight minutes, 11 keep minutes, going, or whatever it going. takes to cook pasta, you could actually make yeah, courgette. You can make it. So this is our wonder vegetable, not only because it's brilliant, it's cheap, and it's abundant at this time of year, but because you don't actually need to cook courgette, which some people are quite astonished by. It um, it's, such a, it's got such a high water a content that just yeah. tossing through a pesto, um, the salt and the acid in the pesto Thank naturally you softens Thank it you, up. Emma. Or putting a hot sauce straight onto it and, and tossing it through the noodles, and you end up with a lovely hot dish, you and you can see how quickly yeah. it is to actually make, just make just the noodles. So yeah, hot or cold, don't bother to cook your, your courgette. You can put it into a kind of a hot soup just as you serve you it. Um, if you're going to make um, more root vegetable noodles, they're yep. slightly starchy and harder, then you can actually cook those. So things like beetroot well? noodles, squash noodles, oh, lovely. carrot yeah, noodles. Yeah. You can slightly steam them. You can give them a, um, saute them in a pan gently. <laughs> <laughs> is that <Yay>! your friend? <laughs> <laughs> Marcus has bought his own fan club for spiralizing. I like that. So here you go. So any, did people say, have they tried this before? Courgette, courgette is, oh, courgette is the easy one to do, but then when you've, when you've mastered the courgette, that's quite okay. a bendy one, you can still do bit, it. I'll give you a straight one. You can, there you go. Uh, and if you do have a bendy one, just cut, cut it into manageable pieces, is, is the tip. So um, courgettes are the easy one to do, then you can move on to carrots, apples, 
Uh, spiralized apples with, what do you do? You toast almond, toast you put a almond, bit of cinnamon. cinnamon. and a drop of vanilla, and it tastes like um, apple pie. Apple pie. Ooh. This is really good. Dollop of yogurt, put it on nice your pancakes, one. put it on your porridge. Great breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I want you to taste it. Is he, is he allowed to taste it or not? Are you allergic to anything, sir? Are you likely to sue me at any point? No. Fine. Or me. Okay, you, you can, can taste these it. Two. I don't mind that. So Disgusting. this is our ragu. So everybody's got their own favourite way of doing ragu. So I'm um, going to give you. We've learned from ragu. our Italian best friends to put a tiny bit of mixed spice in there to bring out the flavours and makes it sweeter. Um, a good ragu is always better the longer you cook it. Yeah. Um, days. Don't always have days. We love to do it in a slow cooker actually. Yeah. But one of our tips is chicken livers. So chicken livers are a super nutritious food that's con gone completely full out of, of fashion. Iron, yeah. Full of iron. Very nutritious and um, relatively easy now to pick up organic chicken livers. So we're big fans of that and adding one chicken liver at a time, depending on your taste buds or who you're, who you're serving to, um, gives it that real meaty depth. So if you have to make your ragu oh, very that. quickly, <laughs> adding in chicken livers chopped up into your ragu is very nice. Oh, but that's anyway, fantastic. I've yeah. never tried that, actually. Add, um, and then we really like it quite, you know, we, we, it's, it gives it that really kind of deep flavour. Yeah, lovely depth. And Do if you're going to make fork? it... Yes. If you're going to make it anyway, Try make that. tons of ragu because you can freeze this in batches. You can come in of an evening Ooh. when you're really fancying something comforting. Remove your, your ragu from the freezer, heat it in the pan, yep. you spiralise your courgettes, pop it on, and dinner's We've served. And that's, so that's, that's a way of basing your meals on vegetables before you've even introduced a side salad or um, you know, a vegetable side dish. My kids, kids love exactly. it. They do. They do. They so we've just had a it. thumbs up on, on the ragu and uh, courgette. And what I wanted to quickly say is, the lovely team behind made our ragu for us, but it's piled full of veg, so we grate loads of carrots in at the yeah. end. Um, we are, one of the reasons why we've got our own spiralizer is we, we didn't grow up, we wouldn't call ourselves foodies in the sense that we grew up cooking. We loved watching Ready Steady Cook, ah, love yes. Ainsley it's Harriet, good. never actually did love anything really ourselves, good. just watched it. Um, and we cook now for a living, and one of the reasons we set up Hems and Hems is yeah. because if we you, found it hard to eat lovely, delicious food, food yeah. out on the road or, or doing our jobs. So we started absolutely. making our own food, yeah. okay. then started making it for other people. But we've never, we've still never, and never needed to master the art of chopping. Right. So one of the great things about the spiralizer, it makes it look, makes you look like a fancy it chef, and it like does all the hard work. You have Michelin star nice skills yeah. so without the uh, ten years in the kitchen. Exactly, uh, <laughs> exactly, and no fuss. So if anyone can see, if um, if anyone's a bit scared of green, if you actually um, oh, peel them and peel then, the yeah. courgette first, you can get the kind of lighter noodles. So it's a great way of introducing it to kids. And then the kids really won't know they're eating. Pens. Well, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, get the kids involved. I mean, it's not, it's not like h holding a mandolin, you know, one of those things mm. that lives in your cupboard and you're too scared to put your hand in the cupboard in case you lose a finger. It's um, m really easy to do. Yeah. Your hands are completely away from the blades. And just like riding a bicycle, you know, you put minimum effort in here <laughs> and uh, you put a... <laughs> Never heard that one before. <laughs> the bigger the courgette, the more noodles obviously you're going to get out the other end. Yeah. Um, and there's two other blades. So you can have really thick noodles. I think we've got some here. Um, what's my, what have you done? I'm just noodles? doing Thank one more much. salad over here. Um, <laughs> and you've also got blades. So you can have really thin, lovely, delicate ribbons. But yep. the noodle, the small noodle blades are favourite because it really does look like pasta. And mm. as you can Thank see... Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> As you yeah. can see, it really starts Fantastic to resemble, especially when it starts to, to soften up and stuff in the hot sauce, and you really get that kind of spaghetti feel. So um, it's a great way of basing meals on vegetables. Will you do me cucumbers, Jazz? I will. So I'm just quickly making... Um, we, we get asked, where, where does your inspiration come from? And lots of different places. We're half Filipino. Our mum's from the Philippines, so she loves... Uh, anyone ever had Filipino food before? <laughs> oh, really? You've been to the Philippines? Oh, I mentioned. Very interesting. <laughs> You've been to uh, our mums. Do you know our mums? <laughs> Banji from Surbiton. So we only grew up. I went to the Philippines once growing up. Jasmine's been a couple of times. It's not right. really known for its food culture. And actually, the home cooking is amazing. And it's very much, um, you know, the cheaper cuts of meat, slow cooked. They love tamarind, you know, that sour fruit. Uh, they love um, ginger and onions. And it was a Spanish colony for 400 years, King Philip of Spain. So. Philippines, sorry. Anyway, and a there's a lot of, learning lot of Spanish, I hope I got that right, <laughs> lots of Spanish <laughs> flavors as well, like bay leaves and tomatoes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our mum taught us to make food from leftovers. So she, she always looked in the fridge, and on a Sunday, we didn't get a Sunday roast, we got Sunday big soup, which is everything in the fridge put into a soup. That was about to go off. That was about to go off. Stroke um, had slightly But gone actually, off. that's a chef's bonus, by the way, anybody who hasn't had one of these before. And that's you just showing you all the noodles uh, yes. when you get so many. 
That's so brilliant. she taught us how to exactly. make food go further, which I think is a really, really important thing because if you're going to spend money on quality ingredients, organic yeah. meat and, and beautiful ingredients, you want to not have any waste and you want to make it easy for yourself. So we love the idea of turning one thing into another. And this salad came about from having um, leftover chicken from a Sunday roast. Um, and this is all the juicy bits pulled off the carcass, and then we save the carcass to make broth. And if you're, if where are we? We're, we're on the kitchen table. At, I can't remember the time. Anyone? A time. It's just over a there time. In the table uh, if sessions, anyone wants yeah. to come and see us talk a bit more about broth, but we, we make broth with our carcass, and then this is the leftover amazing shredded You're big meat. fans of bone broth. Big fans so of bone am I. broth. I love it. Do you love it? I love it. I what, love how using do you chicken it? carcass. For after the roast dinner for chicken soups and it's just brilliant. It's using every last yeah, bit of yeah, the yeah, animal. Yeah. So here we've, we've got this, you know, quite a generous amount of chicken, but say you only had that last two handfuls left and you wanted to feed a family of four, yeah. we would then turn it into something different. So, um, you know, whether spiralizing cucumbers or using up some leftover roast veg, but this one came about because we, we love Asian flavors, sesame, yeah. lime and all those things and lots and lots of herbs. And uh, it all there. just comes together with a lovely zingy dressing. Very good. Anyway, I think it's pudding time now. Okay, I'll carry right. on with this. <laughs> I've got the needles. Right, on to pudding. So, not demoed this one before. Right, got to make a bit of room for me, Mel. Oh, right, I'll come over. Where should I go? I'll go over there. We're running out of space. Okay. Let me find some space for you. It's amazing how much mess you can make and space you can Have take over. Have I got over one here? This is the big minutes. kitchen and you're uh, using all kitchen. of it. I love it. Okay, has anyone ever made our avocado lime cheesecake? Oh! Yeah. Okay, so brilliant. <laughs> It's one of my favorites, and in testing this recipe, I, I didn't actually ever get bored of it. And it's so straight, it's, um, instead of using dairy, which we are into, some people don't realize that we actually love, I mean, we're big fans of butter. Um, cheese, we love cheese. Love cheese. cheese. We, big, we promote good dairy, and there's a massive difference, and um, I think it's all coming to light now about what it the is. difference is. About, about the price of milk. It's price a, of milk, a exactly. a vital issue at the moment, absolutely vital. And all of our farmers living for off grants and things, yeah. and um, there is a huge difference in what, in what the right dairy is, and good dairy used to be a, a cure, you know, you were not well in, in, in the city, you'd be sent out to a spa town um, to bathe in the water, to drink milk, and to get sunshine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, this is not the reason we've made this a dairy-free cheesecake, but this is because we love we love avocados, and avocados right. are a fantastic fat. And if anyone knows our book, we drum on about fat all the time. Fat's essential, um, an essential food, and we've become very scared of it in the last 70 years or so. We've been ta taught that it's, you know, um, to do with um, obesity, obesity, high blood diabetes. pressure, diabetes, every, and et cetera. It's not true. And it's all coming to light now. And it's yeah. all about, it's not good fats being um, unsaturated and bad fats no. being saturated. It's, it's, um, more complicated than it's that. It's more complicated. <laughs> and just the, the easy way to think of it is natural fats are good for us. So yeah. whether that's the fat from the animal or that's the fat from, um, you know, just crushed sunflowers to give you the oil, you know, they're the real fats. So it's very important to kind of read the labels and understand what you're buying. So unprocessed fats are what we need to be yeah. looking at. I mean, Anna was doing that lovely curry earlier with that coconut oil, which yes. is a wonderful fat. And I mean, it's pure this fat, but it's... Pure <laughs> fat. And it's, it's, um, it's a great fat to, to eat. So I first came across the idea of fat as being good for us about 10 years ago when a guy who was a kind of extreme climber oh, was yeah. basically eating a pot of coconut oil, which I found so bizarre. I mean, yeah. who, who eats a pot of fat? Yeah. <laughs> and now I can see where it's coming from. It's medium chain fatty acids. They're very um, slow releasing. They're, they're very sustaining. So it's a great food. It does, it's not like um, something like a it's fizzy not, drink to yeah, it's spike, not spike you. Is it? You get yeah. loads of energy and then you crash. This is a wonderful way to eat. And also it makes, it, you can um, absorb fat soluble vitamins by eating lots of fats. Um, it makes also, what, what I love is it makes vegetables Ooh. that people don't like as much, like the brassicas, cauliflower yeah. and kale and Brussels broccoli. Sprouts. It adds, exactly. Oh, coconut ro roasted uh, Brussels sprouts are a wonderful thing. Are amazing. And I shouldn't have told you because that's in our next book and I'm not supposed to talk about it, but it's amazing. <laughs> but, but now it, you don't need to buy the book. Don't need to buy the book. Because <laughs> it, it adds that lovely sweetness. Everyone thinks, oh, does it make everything taste coconutty? Well, you can get different types of coconut oil now. There's so many. I mean, walking around today, seeing the amount of juice brands and coconut, coconut oil brands. Coconut water and... It, it, coconut water, it's incredible. But it doesn't make everything taste coconutty and it actually makes those more bitter vegetables um, lovely and sweeter, and it gives them that amazing roasted caramelized. I mean, yeah. roasted cauliflower um, florets are incredible as well. Take on that brown tinge. And yes, lovely. exactly. Lovely, a bit of crunch to them. We love this food. Um, well, while you were doing that, I quickly, I, um, I put some lettuce, and you can, anyone had raw pak choy before? 
That's very delicious. Uh, I don't have any now, but just, just <laughs> letting you know. So I would normally put pak choy and lettuce together and then the cucumber noodles and the chicken. I could put more chicken if you like. I know this is your lunch. Yeah, brilliant, more chicken, And tons please. and tons of herbs and lots of spring onions. Um, and if I wanted to, I'd add more color. I mean, I like that it's all green. I might add some avocado or you could put in, I mean, we almost had, um, the logo for our brand is a cabbage because we love cabbage so much. Right. And that is, to, com, that's coming to us two ways. Our mum's from the Philippines, they love cabbage. And then our dad yeah. uh, was in the army and he took us to Germany and we lived there for two years growing up. So we had so much cabbage, so, so sauerkraut, fine. cabbage with everything. And we couldn't believe it when we were kids coming back to England, how nobody liked cabbage. No one likes cabbage. Uh, but yeah, also, and it's such a cheap vegetable as well. Yeah. So wherever, I mean, pretty much every meal I'm eating cabbage. There's cabbage in it somewhere. Yeah, there's, I don't there's a camera anywhere. above. Oh, there is. Can everyone see? So I put four large avocados in here. It says five in the recipe book, but they were absolutely humongous. They are the um, ones. Then we've got all this fat. Oh my God, coconut oil. So this is, this is the fat that's going to make it creamy. But also when coconut um, oil is cold, it sets. So this kind of sets our, the cheesecake parts. And if you just um, warm that up pudding. in the pan, then it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, in this weather, you could yeah, literally spoon it out. It actually, out. Yeah. Um, you know when summer's over is when your coconut oil is not liquid anymore. And it's winter, and it's hard. <laughs> so we've got the coconut know. oil. So this is just, we've got vanilla extract. Um, I have no idea what that is. That might be toasted sesame oil. Yes, it is. I don't want to do that, I think. Um, <laughs> oh, that's mine. <laughs> Soy sauce. No, we don't want that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let you know, we did, pr I promise you, we spent an He's hour practicing this. <laughs> that's my tray. <laughs> okay, this is oh. sesame oil. Oh. This, this is, is the case is. of too many chefs. Well, the <laughs> honey. I, don't even, I can't remember what the end of the thing honey. is. Yay, Yay, we've got an ingredient. Okay, so look how much honey is going into this pudding. You know, you really don't need a lot. And this is another thing we're into. We're into... Um, Provenance, um, fats, but also just because we're swapping white sugar or whatever the, the devil sweetener is at the moment with a natural sugar, we don't put in the same amounts. We don't need to. Our taste buds become overly accustomed to kind of sweet foods. Over sweet foods. Over sweet yeah. foods. Ooh, Even absolutely. our fruit has been made to be sweeter and sweeter. If we ate an apple from you know, our grandparents' generation, it would seem so, so sour yeah, to yeah. us. Um, so this is, we, we say kind of taste and taste as you go along. If you're introducing to family who've got very sweet tooth, then put the extra honey in and then slowly reduce, reduce it. Reduce it down. In, in, in a matter and of two weeks. they won't notice, yeah. It, it could be, but also... We've just started using some amazing honey from Regent's Park in the restaurant, oh, wow. actually. It's very nice. Yeah, Fantastic. Regent's Park honey. That's um, nice. Stuff. I want you to taste my salad, but oh, yeah. um, I can't find a fork. So, and I'm really worried about your outfit. <laughs> a me sized spoon. I me got all your ingredients now. <laughs> okay. Maybe we could grab a fork. Uh, meanwhile, I'm putting in some lime juice. So we've got avocado, coconut lime oil, spoon. and lime juice in here. And here because, you know, foods taste different all the time, we have to just keep testing and, and tasting. Can you eat it? Yeah. So you'll see in our recipe books we say here, between here, this much and this much sweetener, or add a, bit, add a pinch of salt. Everyone's um, idea of a pinch is different, so go slowly. And one no. thing you must remember to do, that of course, in the excitement of you all being and looking at me, um, I got nervous and forgot to snip my noodles. So you can, it's fine, because if you're by yourself, yeah. it doesn't matter how long your noodles are, but with everyone watching, you might want to be <laughs> not doing that, or, we, or you end up with a lady in the tramp moment. Yeah, exactly, How's that? yeah. So this was um, just loads of lettuce, um, sesame and lime. Sesame and lime. Simple, simple, sesame yeah. and lime, and a tiny bit of tamari, which is a gluten-free soy. Oh, thank you. Now I can join oh, in as well. You. How's that? Mmm. Really lovely. And just some fresh chilli. Just, uh, just some fresh chilli on very top. Very thinly sliced. Mmm. So with cucumber yep. noodles, you don't want to add the dressing until you're ready to eat. So this amazing, quick summer salad. If you, if you used, I don't know, some squash noodles, you could lightly cook them, or celeriac yep. or uh, carrot noodles. They do well if they're marinated in the... Um, Oh, look, you've done yours elegantly. So you can, yeah, wind it like spaghetti. <laughs> There's a surprise. I haven't. Okay. Mm. Oh, lovely. Yum. Absolutely lovely. Really fresh. Mm. So that's our base. So we've just got honey, avocado, mm. um, coconut oil, and lime juice, fresh lime juice. And then you can put a pinch of salt. I find that salt in a sweet pudding just brings out the flavours more, and you actually need to use less, less sweetener. Fantastic. Makes it more complex. Um, do you like our slightly retro cake stand I found for you? Yes. yes. It's beautiful. And what I'm going to do here, so this is toasted pecans, 
So I do this in the food processor first, toasted pecans with desiccated coconut, cacao nibs and dates. And this by itself, you could roll this into balls. Have you seen those kind of bliss balls or those power balls, raw vegan balls that everyone has? You could make that like that. Um, and all it is is that ground up together in the food processor. And Great then you for can, little bars for kids for lunchboxes. Brilliant. Well. And really you can good. pack it into this. And we actually have a cheesecake somewhere already made. Right. It's in not the in the fridge. fridge. Look, I've got an avocado tea towel while I'm making an avocado dessert here. <laughs> has anyone got the cheesecake? <laughs> Kim. Um, <laughs> And a glass. So we're doing a deconstructed one because I wouldn't be able to make it set in time for everyone to see today. Um, and we've been serving these at kind of dinner parties and things that we've been doing in events. So we just kind of feel very fancy saying deconstructed. When deconstructed. I'm deconstructed. Um, like. Jasmine so, yeah. says things like, I feel like Ottolenghi sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Right. Um, so then you put in this, you put in your cheesecake layer. Your Yum. cheese layer, sorry. This is so good and good for you. This would be breakfast. I mean, this is avocados. What's in your base again? Avocados, pecans, dates, cacao nibs. Not in my base, but in my, yeah. Pecans, yeah. desiccated coconut, um, dates, and cacao nibs. And then you can just chill or freeze it and serve it later to people. Um, if you put some cocoa and you swap the Yum. lime for... Um, swap the lime for orange. That's delicious. Chocolate orange mousse. And that's a great way, especially if you've got people who are a bit scared of the fact it's got um, um, green in it. So there we are. Look at that. Again, you need to try it. Oh, just, yes. Just like Ottolenghi. But Again, no, I think you should try this one. one. This, is the, this is how it should really look. So as you can see, you've got oh, it's the amazing. most beautiful cheesecake. And that's they set it in the fridge, didn't they? It? And you can just have that frozen, make that ahead before a dinner party. We've, and, uh, we've made something like this. You, you, we Jasmine's go. more the, the sweet person in, in the relationship. She makes all the bakings <laughs> and so in on. Many ways. I'm the curry person, the curry in the soup. We call her Smelly Melly Curry. <laughs> what are you telling everyone? It's so embarrassing. Big sisters. Anyway, um, this is lovely oh, as a birthday cake. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chill back nicely. Really, really nice. And then, of course, you can cover it with berries. You can oh, shave... Chocolate over it, or very otolenghi, pomegranate seeds, Ooh, and yes. uh, lime zest would be he, really he nice. He would approve of he that. He would approve of that. Are you going to have that piece? Yeah. Go but for it. Right. Yes. I'm so sorry we can't feed you. It's not our rules. I'm sorry. But as I say, I'm here to do this for you. <laughs> How's that? That's fantastic. Isn't it good? That's really nice. And also because the well, that quite pretty, didn't it's I? Very nice. That's okay. really pretty too. <laughs> Lovely. So if anyone can see there, it's still got paper on it. Um, but yeah, this mm. has been one of those that's kind of, we did a, an event a where we served this and nobody realised at all that it's got avocado in it. No. So you wouldn't know, would you? It's like it's a lime really limey, yeah, limey and... Delicious. And you can make that as a like birthday... Like a key lime pie, pie almost. So anyone that's made the avocado lime version, remember chocolate and blood orange is really, oh, wow. really good. Ooh, yeah. And then you can dehydrate blood orange circles and kind of decorate the top. I mean, that's what's wonderful, I think, about you, you girls and the recipes is that... You can swap out so many of the ingredients for what you've oh, got. Absolutely, we I are. I mean, the ragu or the courgettes could be uh, could be uh, carrots, as you said, or butternut squashes. Absolutely, or we're complete trial and error, and um, I'm not one to run out to the shops to get something that's missing. Does I'll that look just like a heart? Whatever I've got. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Avocado lime cheesecake. What else do we do with avocados? Oh, we wanted to do it today, but we ran out of time. It's a uh, chocolate avocado mousse. Oh right. Mm. What else do we do? Um, ice cream. Our mum taught us that, actually. When we avocado were growing up. Avocado ice cream. You know, your mum teaches you about things growing up and you reject, no, you, you follow her as a kid and then you reject all ideas as you get into becoming a teenager. A teenager. Yeah. And then you go to her and you go, mum, mum, I've had avocado in, in an ice cream or something. And she, she, says, she was feeding that to you I think you my mum mashed up um, avocado when I was about four years old and told me it was green ice cream. And I didn't touch it again until I was 12. So parents, don't do that. It's not fair. <laughs> it's really not fair. Um, and then I remember my auntie, I was 12 years old, and my parents were doing the very 70s thing of having half avocado, avocados yeah, as a with starter. Prawns. And, uh, yeah, with the prawns. prawns no, we, yeah. we just had it with vinaigrette. And my auntie said, don't you know this is very good for your skin? And that was it. When I was 12, I got into avocados big time. Yeah. But now, really just understanding, we, we, we've, we've got to a point where we're all embracing the, the plant fats because we understand that fat is essential. Yeah. And we're understanding oily fish, but we really are coming from it that animal fats are super important. Just, you know, we cook in ghee. We only cook in saturated fats because they're more heat stable. So saturated fats are um, mostly recognizable by being solid at room temperature. Um, that does not mean margarine and things like that yeah. because they're unnatural fats. So stick to natural fats. And if you're building fat back into your diet, 
you can massively cut down on sugars, you can really stabilize blood sugar levels, um, and you can feel very satisfied with less food. So there's a reason we put olive oil, you know, butter on our broccoli, olive oil on our salads. You know, we need those fats there to make a food satisfying. Yeah. Um, and provenance of food is very important, and that's why we really champion the cheaper cuts of meat and celebrate eating the whole animal, because yeah. it's very important to know. It's vital. And you can, yeah. up, you, know, you can up your game. If you buy the cheaper cuts, which doesn't mean cheap meat, you can yeah. actually up your game and support the farmers who are doing it properly, yeah. as well as And you can pick up some amazing bargains. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, absolutely yeah. I was fantastic. talking to someone about lamb chest. neck and Lamb neck, shoes. a big fan of lamb neck. Yep. Yeah. Go direct to the farmers. Beef cheeks, if I you've love. Got, if you've got a big freezer, use it. You know, you can get half a, you can get half a cow, half, yeah. a, half a lamb, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you get every single bit, and it actually kind of works out cheaper than just, you know, the most expensive part is the chicken breast, and we've been living off, the, off that. That, that for, for so the long. Bit and it's no pie, taste, so, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so keep the skin on your chicken, keep the, keep, get, you eat the marrow bones, make stock again. Um, of come and see us to talk about broth. Come and see us um, broth later. 2.30, I think it is. 2.30. 2.30. Let's and say 2.30. Are you girls signing copies of the book next door? Is that we the plan? are. Yes, yes, if we'll you'll have us. Then, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Thank you. For the amazingly wonderful. Thank you. Hey, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.